Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Houston Life. It is Monday, August 16th. I'm Courtney Savala. Hi, Courtney. Hi, everyone. I'm Derek Shore. Thanks so much for sticking with us on this very eventful Monday. Absolutely. A condensed version of Houston Life now, but we just heard remarks from President Biden regarding Afghanistan. We're going to now check in with Keith and Sophia for more on this developing stories and our other top headlines today. Hey, guys. Hey there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yes, indeed. The situation in Afghanistan, one of the top stories that we're continuing to cover. Yeah, you just heard from President Biden coming up at 4 o'clock, a close look at what's happening on the ground in Afghanistan, what happens next, and could U.S. security become more vulnerable because of this developing situation? And it's a story we've been covering since last night, a chemical plant incident that released a pungent odor across several communities on the east side, including Deer Park, Laporte, and others. What we've learned about the chemical and the investigation into exactly what went wrong. And the story of one man's 100th birthday celebration and why it meant so much for him to jump out of an airplane. The backstory on this veteran skydive. But right now we're going to check in with Frank, the check on the forecast. Frank, you skydive? Uh, ne never, never. That's, that's, uh, that's not even on my plate. Uh, I tell you what, uh, storms again, the very typical heat of the day. What we've been seeing, it seems like every afternoon we're getting it again. The coastal showers have diminished. But look here, if you follow I-10, that's already a slow commute. These showers into the Galleria area, right on back to the east side. And look at this here where you see that purple. That very, If anywhere there's going to be a flood advisory, I think it's going to be here. You've had an easy two inches of rain in just one hour. So Crosby up to the north here toward Huffman. Watch out in that region. Some low-lying flooding is uh, certainly possible. Heavy rains are coming down there. These storms, they just aren't moving very much. So they're washing themselves out where they are, just like these up to the north. There's a little bit of a storm there in uh, uh, Grimes County. In the meantime, this is Fred, which made a landfall right there about 2.15, a little cape there uh, southeast of Panama City, Florida. Then we go down here. This is Grace. It's continuing to move off to the west. I'll track this coming up. It looks like for now this is going to be a problem for Mexico, both the Cancun area and then again toward Tampico. But we'll track that with the latest at the 4 o'clock numbers uh, when those come in. The TD8 is out there around Bermuda. In fact, I talk about Grace being a Gulf storm in my blog today. Click to Houston.com slash weather. In the meantime, 80s, uh, if you get a storm, watch out. You don't want to be caught in any of that light. It was a big lightning storm yesterday, as you probably know. But the storms are going to die down by sunset when we get to 100 and tracking grace to the Gulf. You read that right. 100. My goodness. Yeah. Uh, busy weather day as well. Frank, I'm surprised you would never go skydiving. I, I remember you. I remember when you did it when you first got here. I, I said we all make a little work trip out there to Roche Aaron. No, we'll watch you. We're watch. going to keep our feet on the ground. <laughs> All right, guys. Root for you. <laughs> Thanks for the update. We'll see you at 4 o'clock. Okay, you know what makes everything better? What? A sugar cookie. Any oh. kind of cookie, right? After the break, we have expert cookier Jacqueline Terrell. She's sharing her sweet success on the Food Network and some pro cookie decorating tips. And later, how about saving money and eating better with your own fresh herb garden at home? Sounds good to me. We are getting a lesson from a local expert whose planting skills impressed. Get this. Martha Stewart herself. That and so much more when Houston Life returns. Well, welcome back. You know, here's some motivation for your Monday after being turned down by the Food Network two times. Jacqueline Terrell was ready to take a break from making cookies, but with some encouragement from her friends, she applied one more time finally finding sweet success. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Terrell, owner of Tudor House Cookies. The first time I ever decorated sugar cookies, Pinterest was just starting to be a thing. And so I went absolutely gangbusters for my oldest's first birthday. And one of the things I did was decorated sugar cookies and I hated it. <laughs> and I said, I'm never gonna do this again. Uh, and then a couple of years later, I picked it back up again and never looked back. I was actually thinking about taking a step away from cookies and was at CookieCon, which is a convention for cookiers. And all my friends there knew that I had actually applied to Food Network two other times. 
and uh, they encouraged me to apply. They said, just one more time, Jacqueline, just try one more time. So I applied, and it went really well, and they liked me, and I ended up being able to be on their show, Christmas Cookie Challenge, and I won. <laughs> Forget about it. My knees just went weak. Jacqueline. Oh, my gosh. That's oh, so good. Yay, One of the life. best cookies I have ever eaten here. I really enjoyed the experience. It was the most concentrated amount of stress I've ever had in a small amount of time. But it was, it was fun stress, just like kids. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you have bakers that are good at decorating cookies, or you have artists whose medium is cookies. And I feel like I for, fall more into the category of like a baker who is good at sugar cookies. Um, I never really was good at drawing or painting or anything like that, but I can make a real cute cookie. <laughs> I love the story. Jacqueline is here with me now to walk me through how to get that perfectly iced sugar cookie. Welcome to the show. It's great to meet you. I'm so glad to be here. Okay, I have to ask you before we get into this whole cookie icing thing, did you freak out when Reed Drummond was like, my knees just went weak. This is the best <laughs> sugar cookie I've ever had. Uh, yes, I didn't really know what to do with myself. It was one of the few times where I was lost for words. <laughs> it's so great because I hear so many people, whether it's in arts or baking or something, if you hear a no, don't let it break you down. You're just that much closer to a yes, and you proved that with your story. Yeah, I was really not going to try again, and my friends encouraged me, and then I won, so I'm glad I tried again. It's so great. We are, too. So these kits that you have here, this is part of your virtual cooking class. You say... I can make these cookies to look just yes. like this. <laughs> Maybe not just like this, but very close, yes. Okay, so we get everything we need in this box here. So mm -hmm. it has the icing, the sprinkles, the cookies already made. So what do we do first? I see I've got two on my plate here. Yes, so we're gonna start with our naked cookie here with our brown icing. Okay. And so uh, with the kit, you get your icing already ready to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna outline, follow along with the shape of the cookie. Okay. On the, the center or on the outside? Okay. Where I'm going on the outside first, but you can do either one. Okay. And the key to icing a cookie and getting a nice smooth top is you don't want to drag your piping bag along the surface of the cookie. You want to let the icing kind of fall on the cookie, just like that. Okay. A lot easier said than done. Now, Quite Courtney, honestly. I've seen you do cookies on this show before, so I expect nothing but perfection. Oh, boy. I did win our cookie craft contest. Well, but, there you um, go. I beat Derek, but hey, <laughs> I totally won it. Awesome. And so then when you're filling in, you can actually squeeze quite a bit harder to get more icing coming out at once. Well, yours looks way prettier. Well, oh, you really want us to squeeze it out. Oh, yeah. Okay. We've got to get that icing on there. So this is to make it dry basically in a smooth layer. Right. We're just trying to get a base layer on there and okay. then you can actually use your piping bag to kind of swirl that icing, fill in any gaps you may have. Okay. Just really get that that icing in there on that cookie. And how long would we make would we have it set then? So for in my classes, we would do this base layer and then we would set this cookie aside, do Drink some, some of the wine other or design. something. Drink some wine. <laughs> wine. Yeah, do it. But um, magic of television, we've yes. got the beautifully we dried We got a base one. layer already okay. done. Right. So now we're going to switch to our already iced cookie and our pink icing. Okay. And the fun part about this is icing on a donut is not perfect. We don't have to be perfect. Okay. So we're just going to start on the outside, and I'm just going with like a little wavy swirl situation. Okay. And you can do it however you want. There is no right answer here. Okay. And Mine's we're going to do... very wavy. Yeah. Good. Wavy is fun. Okay, and then in and then the we center. do a circle in the center. Excellent. You're doing a wonderful job. Oh, maybe I had too much coffee today. I think. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to squeeze a little bit harder. Get a little bit of a thicker icing in there. Okay. And we're going to get that fun oh pink icing on the top of our donut. Okay. I love, there's nothing better than a good sugar cookie. I mean, the thing is, we can always buy these from you. <laughs> Thank heavens. Um, and then we just put our sprinkles on, right? Yeah, and so then you just have your, these are actually called jimmies, oh, but you didn't know that. I did not know that. Yeah, and so you just sprinkle your I love jimmies it. on top. And not you have a fun 
donut okay. cookie. Not that bad. No, very nice. Okay, well, I love this. I love a good baking box that we can do at home, and I love sharing your success story as well. It's great to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you. And if you missed any of Jacqueline's tips, we're going to have them posted on our website, HoustonLife.tv. Now we're going to send things over to Derek, who's helping you spice up a little dinner plate from your garden while I eat some of these cookies. Those cookies look fantastic. You did a great job, Courtney. This woman, Jen McDonald, joining us after the break. Need help with your green thumb? She is just the expert to help us. We'll have tips to easily create our own herb gardens at home. That's when Houston Life returns right after this. Whether you live in an apartment or a house, growing your own delicious herb garden might be easier than you think. Mom of all trades, garden designer and consultant for Rooted Garden, Jen McDonald is here to show us how it is done. Okay, you gotta tell us the Martha Stewart connection. <laughs> how did you catch her eye, Jen? Well, Martha Stewart's people found me on Instagram and they saw that I loved home and garden. And when they saw that I went from one garden bed to 14 garden beds in a year, they said, you've made the show. So my job was to impress Martha Stewart. And this is a brand new show that she has streaming on Disney Plus, is that right? Yes, so there was eight episodes. I was on the last episode, which was about vegetable gardens. And Martha said that I reminded her of her a long, long time ago, so. That is such a huge compliment. There she is, of course, driving her tractor around. I love it. Yes. The show is called Martha Gets Down and Dirty. We will tune in. In the meantime, Jen, let's chat about you. We're seeing some video of you on the screen right now. I followed your Instagram a while back and truly you are the mom of all trades Courtney uh, came up with that term for you we should give her credit but you really do it all I'm a big fan of your calligraphy work and your design work let's talk about planting a garden because for a lot of people they say they don't have a green thumb they can't keep anything alive right. you're here to show us we can do it yes that does not exist in our vocabulary so we are planting an amazing little compact herb garden today the reason why I chose these is because these are herbs that grow year-round in Houston so the First thing when you plant an herb garden that you need to think about is sunlight. Okay. You need to have four to six hours of sunlight per day. And the next thing that you need to think about is really high quality local soil. Organic soil, right? Organic Since soil. Since you're, you're going to be eating it, you don't yes. want to be eating like fertilizer. Absolutely. So this is a sandy loam soil with a blend of compost. This is a rooted garden proprietary blend. I've already added it into our planter. So we're okay. going to go ahead and get started planting. So when we plant, we already have our oregano and our thyme. I see you have your shovel. Okay. So we're gonna gently loosen this. You can add, you can do a little hole here in the front. And the thing about good soil too is it's pretty easy to, to could, work with, you right? You can basically even use your hands. Yeah, I don't and even need this shovel. That's pretty smart, that's a good tip because a good soil is one that clumps lightly in your hand but then it retracts loosely. And you can see that this is basically like this is like gold in yeah. your hands. So the other thing to think about as we're planting, I'm gonna have you plant the chives in the front and I'll do the same, okay. is moisture. You don't wanna overwater your gardens. I know that's very common. So one thing that I like to recommend to clients is to use the fingertip test. And that's just stick your finger down in the soil about an inch and it should feel damp, but not soggy. And definitely not dry, right? Right, not dry either. And that's one of the challenges with these smaller containers. You really do have to be sure that you're checking on it almost daily, right? Especially yes. in the hot Houston summers. That's a good point. It's really hot right now, so we would want to water a container of this size once, maybe even twice a day. Okay. We did already add our irrigation holes at the bottom, so we know it's gonna have proper drainage. And you can add uh, rocks to the bottom as well? You absolutely can, or a weed fabric barrier. You just wanna make sure that there's uh, you know, holes that, that the water can pass through. That it's not sitting in water and then yes. rotting, right? Correct. Okay. What about the planting depth? I mean, I'm I'm lining mine up with the top of the soil. You're doing the exact right thing. You already have your green thumb. So now what we do is we just backfill a little bit over the roots, and you okay. have. You've already done a perfect, beautiful container garden. Look at that, and this. Thai basil smells like licorice. Right. Also, for anyone who's purchased herbs at the grocery store, 
It is not inexpensive, right? It's it's usually yeah. like four or five dollars for a tiny little container. Absolutely, and this is going to produce year round. So this is something that you don't need a lot of space. You can start small, and then you can increase as your confidence builds, and you could end up on Martha Stewart. Well, just like right? you. Well, we'll be watching the shows Thank on Discovery so Plus. Get down and dirty with Martha Stewart. Thank you uh, so much, Jen. You can always book a consultation with Jen if you want professional help. Martha gets down and dirty is streaming now on Discovery Plus. And to connect with Jen, we have shared a link on our website. The scene on Houston Life section is what you need to look for. Jen McDonald, thanks so much. Thank you so much. This smells fantastic. Good, enjoy. Super easy, very cute. Look at that. I did it mm. with your help. <laughs> All right, after the break on Houston Life, a look at what is coming up on tomorrow's show, including a regular from the Juice Box. We'll be right back. And before we go today, a look at what's coming up tomorrow on Houston Life. It's Nonprofit Day. We'll take a closer look into the Justice for Children organization and what we can all do to protect kids in need. Can't wait for that conversation. Also, Julia Morales, you know, she's the Astros host and sideline reporter. She's going to share more about life on and off the baseball field. I she can't wait to connect with cool. her. And us being of cool people, we had some great guests on today's show, Courtney. Some strong mamas and talented ones at that. I have the plate of the Tudor House cookies here. All of these flavors are available on her website. I don't want to dip here, but um, the butterscotch pecan, Derek, is the one that um, brought um uh, won her on the show. Oh, yeah, yeah of course. It's the prize-winning butterscotch. Okay, that's yeah. my stomach growling. Also, big thanks to Jen McDonald. Check out this little herb garden it's I made. It's lovely. I made it myself. I'm going to take a bite of this cookie, Courtney. We're so crafty. Mm. So good, right? It's really good. I know. Tudor House, real deal. We're going to see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's Sounds it from this Monday. We're going to toss it over to Keith and Sophia now. Hey, guys. Yes. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, save some for us. Yeah. Okay. We've got a couple. Too. Welcome back, Keith. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you. you.